Right, welcome to take seven or whatever it is. Okay, as you can see ahead in front of you, I have the Uni Hiker, and I'm just about to plug it into my computer. If I can find the right way up for this USB lead. Really wish everything would be USB C. We have signs of life. Just let the system boot up. And for those of us that run Linux, that sort of screen will look fairly familiar. Indeed, this board, this system, this device is a fully fledged kind of Linux machine with a microcontroller built in. Sorry about the pause there. Okay, I'm basically going to run through what we see very quickly. So here's the welcome screen, as it says on the screen, long press the home button. Home button on this is top left, very difficult to see in the video. Press and hold and you get to a little menu. So the exit, that takes us back to the home screen or welcome screen, however you want to call it. If you press the get started button, that gives you a QR code and a link to some tutorials on the website. Run programs. As at the moment I have no programs on here, I assume this is empty. But I'm assuming you can load Python programs onto the system and run them without using a computer. So we exit out of there. Back to service toggle. This gives us a list of different services which I assume are different ways of running your programs. We will investigate that in a future video. Network info just tells you a little bit about the connections on this machine at the moment. If I can get my teeth in at the moment, I'm only connected to this machine via a USB-C connection. This gives it a, an IP address And there are then settings for the wireless and the hotspot, which are not set up at the moment, so nothing comes up. And other devices, which again I don't think is set up. So let's go back. So here's where I presumably I can set up my wireless hotspot. I'm not going to do that at the moment. Let's scroll down. Calibrate touchscreen. Ah, oh, system info. Okay. System info that gives us the operating system version, CPU usage on the Unihiker, and memory and hard drive usage, etc. Calibrate touchscreen. As it says on the tin, change your language. So I'm going to go back to the top menu and I'm going to exit. Right. Very, very brief overview. Let's just move it over a fraction. Of what you see when you start up. I'm now working through the, if I can find my script, not that there's a script, I'm now working through the get started guide, first use guide, which is to be found in the wiki for the Unihiker, the address of which will be in the description below. So according to the wiki, there are a couple of different ways you can program the Unihiker. Uh, the Unihiker is programmed in Python, by the way, full C Python, apparently. First way, which they say is for beginners, is to use a block-based programming system called Mind Plus, which looks very similar to Scratch, which we will have a look at in a minute. Slightly more advanced users or more text-based users can program Python using IDEs such as Jupyter Notebook, VS Code, Thony, or even MindPlus itself. For this video, we are purely going to stick to the MindPlus system, which is their own block-based graphical programming system. 
Okay, I've now switched to the computer. Uh, we're now going to run the Mind Plus software, which I've already installed. Upon installation, I did have to go to settings and change it to English. So, running through the demo, it's in the wiki. First click on Python. Oh, by the way, the first time I did this, it did take a couple of minutes for it to set the Python environment up. Don't be in a hurry, give it a chance. So once that's done, click on Python. Make sure blocks is selected. And now we're going to need to install the extension which enables us to communicate from Mind Plus to the Uni Hiker. So down the bottom left, click Extensions and straight away we see the Uni Hiker extension. Part of the problem I had this morning or earlier today was I was running under Linux which uses a slightly older version of the software and this extension was not visible and I couldn't find it. So I click on Uni Hiker and that now says loaded. So we go back to the main editing screen. And we now have, up here, a new menu appear, which says Connect Remote Terminal. So I think that means that the extension has, has loaded correctly. So we're now going to create the program that's shown in the, the wiki. Once you've entered the code shown in the wiki, you now need to connect to the UniHiker. So we go up to Connect Remote Terminal and select the IP address that's shown. As you can see, it now says successfully connected. It then looks at the UniHiker to check that the libraries are up to date and in my case it's saying that we need to update do we wish to do this now or later so we're we going to do it now so the software then goes off locates the required libraries downloads them and installs them. So now to display the output of our program on the Uni Hiker, I'm being told to click Run. And as you see, it's now changed to Hello Uni Hiker without a space, which is the code I put, or which is the text I put in the code. Let's just check this is working. So I'm going to stop the code and I'm going to change the text, which will, I will change to Hi. Again, if I run it, obviously it scrolls off the screen. In this case, it seems to work. So 
I'm going to stop, which takes us back to that screen. I'm just going to play with the font size. Let's make the font size 8. See what happens. Ah, there we go. I'm just going to scroll this out. And here we have the Python version or the Python code that is generated by the block coding. Again, I'm going to scroll this out of the way. So there we go, folks. A very quick video on my first experience with the UniHiker by DF Robot. Although I've hardly scratched the surface of what it can do, so far I am very impressed and I look forward to exploring more features and functions of the UniHiker in future videos. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please do not hesitate to let me know and I'll see you in the next UniHiker video.